What's going on guys? This is Justin from Myatt's Garage. Um, I wanted to do a quick video today of um, how to gap the rings and the proper way to do it. I'm working on Bad Marrow's uh, 5.3 liter um, engine that I'm building, uh, wide scale boost pistons. Um, actually, uh, I already did all the cylinders. I just got cylinder 5 left to do. So I was using my GoPro and my GoPro died so I'm just doing it on my cell phone right now. Um, so what I usually do is I take the rings and the piston and I actually uh, label it. So I, you, when you do rings you want to do it per each cylinder because just in case there's any type of uh, clearance issues as far as uh, honing one cylinder is honed out more than the other you just want it to be more accurate doing it per cylinder. Um, so what I'll do is uh, cylinder 5, so I'll label cylinder 5 on the piston, so I know that one's going there. And uh, take these rings. Okay, you got, I mean, common sense. I know a lot of you already know this, but I'm doing it for people that are actually trying to get help and do it the proper way and stuff like that. Um, these here are your oil rings. You got the top, bottom, and then the center. This, this one goes on the bottom here. It's just your oil ring. Um, put those to the side. Then you got, this is your second ring. This is your top ring. What I'm gonna do today is the top ring I'm going to do 24 thousandths and the second ring I'm going to do 26 thousandths. I already did my measurements. Um, that's what I want to do. You can gap them more, you can gap them less, but I think that's a pretty sweet spot for my engine. Um, okay, so now what I always do is I got this little all squirt gun here. Is I'll put a dab on my finger like that. Kind of just lube up the ring. And move this one up. And then the cylinder, they're already clean, so what I'll do in the cylinder is I'll just put a little bit on my finger like that and kind of just go over it a little bit more. Kind of get the cylinder lubed up, that way I don't scratch the cylinder when I'm uh, doing the ring gap. Lift it off. Okay, now I'm going to do the second ring first, which is 26,000. So what I'll do is I'll put it in first. Now when you do them, I always put the top and where the gap towards the bottom and kind of just slide it in like that. And then take this piston and just kind of square it off. Make, make it square it off real good. So now, see, Wysco they're not gap um, too big from from when they send them to you. So you know, obviously you gap them to your specs. So this is 26 thousandths here. So it looks like we get a good bit go. So now when you do this, I always do one side at a time. I don't do this side. I just do one side. And you got to be real careful because if you take too much material off. You can't put, put material back, so you just want to be real careful that way you don't have to buy another set of rings because you're gapping too much. So, what I'll do here, square it off. Take this, wipe it off real good. Alright, do the same. Uh, Routine I did a minute ago. Square it off the piston. Take this 26,000. Perfect. One shot. Now, when you do it, you don't want it to be too tight where you barely put it through, and you don't want it to be too loose. You don't want any side to side play. Now, when I get this, this is perfect there's no side to side play 
and it's not too tight and not too loose. So what I'll usually do is, now that I did it that way, I'll take the ring out and kind of put it on another position just to be sure that I got the proper measurements. So I kind of put it to the side like that, square it all. And I measure it again. Perfect measurement. You see that? No side to side play. Nice and smooth. So that's 26,000. So that one's done. That's the second ring. So I'll put that back in the box here. Because that after I do that, I want to kind of deburr the edges. So I always put them back in the box and then I'll do all deburr all the edges all at once. That way I'm not doing one at a time. So they're all good. Um, now I got the second ring. I'm sorry, the top ring. That was the second ring I did. Top ring is going to be 24,000. Clean it up. All right, do the same uh, routine here. Put it in like that, slide it. Square it off with the piston. Now you see how I square it off? I take the sides of the pistons and see how they're flush. And then I just kind of rotate it just to make sure that it's all squared off evenly. So now I'm doing 24,000. So I'm gonna take this and Move it to the 24. Now a lot of people run more. The more, I mean, it's really not going to matter. Um, these pistons actually have relief holes in them. So for um, ringland detonation and stuff like that, it kind of prevents it more than a factory piston and its forge. So 24 on the top ring and 26 on the second ring really is probably all I'll ever need. I mean, the car is only going to make, you know, probably a thousand to twelve hundred horse with this engine. So twenty-four. So I got a good bit to go. Take this back out. Now I'll do the same routine like I was doing. Throw the ring off. Be real gentle with it. Don't want to take too much off. Clean it off. Where the cylinder off it is. See, just like that, see? Real nice. Now, I've seen people use pistons, but I've also seen people I actually, I used um, tape, a tape roll, and I kind of got it right towards the cylinder size. That works too, and then I just marked it. But the piston works the best. That's what you really want to use. All right, 24. Yeah, I got a good bit left here. Like I said, I'm taking my time with it. I don't want to rush because I don't want to take too much material off. you do it like a few times you kind of get the routine I mean I've done a good bit of these so I'm kind of used to it now and, and I, you know I, I get it done a lot faster than most people doing it for the first time you know but like I said take your time do not rush because you don't want to make any mistakes and if you make mistakes it could cause you money and a lot of problems so that one there is good. Now I'll just get to deburr the edges. 
put this one in the box. Um, okay, now, like I said, I put it in the box. I label it first cylinder, so I'll put cylinder five. Now I know what cylinder that goes to, um, along with the piston, cylinder five. And this one I've done before. When my GoPro, when my GoPro died, I was doing this one. But um, like I said, all of them are done now. They're all sitting over there on the table behind you guys. And now I just got to put the oil ring on this, cylinder five, and deburr the edges. As I said, if you guys want to see any more videos of me working on engines or any type of uh, LS stuff, let me know. I'm going to try to do more videos. Um, it's hard being so busy and being one person to keep the videos going and editing and stuff like that. But like I said, this motor here, you'll see uh, more pictures of it on uh, Instagram and Facebook. It's going in bad marrow. Um, you know, taking my time with it, making sure everything's right. It's going to make good power. And um, like I said, um, you could pick one of these up on like Amazon or Selmet. This is a pretty good ring gapper. Um, they make better ones. Uh, this one works good for me. And, it's everything that I need right now. Um, so, yep, that's it for today, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, take your time with them. Uh, you don't want to rush. And also, one other thing I didn't mention. Um, when you get uh, rings, when you buy pistons or if you buy rings, it always comes with this paper. And the paper tells you, just so you don't know, like if you don't know, um, the second ring and the top ring, it shows you the difference. And also the oil ring, it shows you how to properly install them and um, how you rotate them on the actual cylinder before you install them. So that's pretty useful there for people that don't know. And um, it even shows you a good and a bad on the ring gap. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, you guys... Stay cool and uh, I'll talk to you soon.